When I was growing up, and I'm not that old, we received our daily bread from the back of a horse-drawn wagon. Our milk and butter and eggs arrived the same way. So did the coal for our furnaces. We relied on horses in our cities, as well as out on the countryside. Even today, in some parts of the world, horses still do the work of cars and tractors and trucks. So do donkeys, like that little fellow behind me. And to a much lesser extent, so do camels. Now, those animals helped us reshape the world. We couldn't have done it without them. Camels never caught on in the United States, but they were important partners in the exploration and settlement of Australia. Now, Australia's donkeys had their best years during the great gold rushes of the last century, just as their cousins the Burroughs did in Western America. Back then, donkeys and horses and camels solved our problems. But today, galloping wild and free and surviving quite nicely in their adopted homelands, they are the problem. And Australia has gone to the simple solution. Simple, but drastic. This is Melbourne, Australia. One of the world's great new cities. And like all new cities, it's built around the automobile. Hoofbeats seldom clack on the clean asphalt streets now. The horse and wagon are novelty items, promoters for a brewery. But for Australia, as for America, the great age of the horse has only recently passed. The end began around the turn of the century. Outside the fledgling cities, the age of the horse lingered. There was a lot of suitable work. The horse helped build railways to bridge the new continent. The horse helped build roads roads for the age of the automobile. And where horses couldn't do the job, donkeys went to work. The donkeys were tougher, better survivors in extreme heat and cold, and where food and water were scarce. And where the water was really scarce, camels were brought in to carry the load. They trekked men and supplies to the dry, hostile heart of the Australian continent. And by the 1920s, the camel had almost outlived its usefulness. Today, the camel's burden has shifted from work to amusement. The camel races in desert towns like Alice Springs are a little short on pageantry. And if you think camels are silly looking, check out some of the riders. They're at the post, sort of. You see, some have trouble getting up for this race. But now they're ready and they're off. Far from the cheering crowds, other camels lead different lives. They've turned wild. They've become outlaws. About 17,000 roam the great desert. They may not be natural to Australia, but they represent the last wild camels in the world. Like their Asian and African ancestors, they easily tolerate blazing days and freezing nights. They browse and graze beyond the fringes of civilization. And they're nomads always on the move. A herd may travel 40 miles a day. 
Most of the time, they don't bother anybody, except an occasional kangaroo or two. But since the 1920s, camels have been fair game. They've been shot as pests. They've been hunted for sport. They literally have to run for their lives. These men have not come to kill. They've come for a roundup. That's about 800 pounds of young camel. And maybe 200 pounds of old man. He's one tough old man. These young camels may be destined for a foreign zoo or for the racetrack at Alice Springs. There isn't much other work for camels or for thousands of horses running wild or for the donkeys especially the donkeys. North Central Australia often suffers drought, merciless drought. And when drought comes, livestock is threatened. Livestock and livelihoods. The wild donkeys compete for the precious grazing land which isn't so bad when the rains have come. But when the rains have not come, the competition gets eliminated. Days without rain become weeks without rain. The wild horses plod over dying rangeland. Their water holes are shrinking into mud puddles. The symbols of death are everywhere. In the Northern Territory, time, like water, is running out. But hostile conditions breed tough and resourceful horses. They find some water every day, even if they have to dig for it. If they can't get to the water, they die. The desert also breeds tough and resourceful men. All of Australia's 100,000 wild donkeys have been officially sentenced to death. These men are just two of many executioners. Donkeys react to the sounds of approaching danger. These men mean business, and their business is hunting donkeys. The donkeys' ancestors carried frontier Australia on their backs. But that was then, and this is now. Before Australia was fully explored, it was believed to be one gigantic paradise, as rich and fertile at the center as it was around the edges. Instead, the explorer found drought and desert. In one area of the continent, for example, 500,000 acres are required just to feed 5,000 cattle. So if you're a rancher, you can't afford much competition, especially when there's drought, and there's drought about once every 10 years. Camels aren't much of a problem, but the wild horses go for the best grass, and they use up some of the best water holes. They're high on Australia's hit list, but not as high as the donkeys. The donkey is an easy kill. These men take about 30 a day and make a good living by selling the meat.
A similar fate awaits thousands of wild horses. Grace and beauty are no defense. About 17,000 a year end up as meat on the tables of Europe alone. Like America, the other new world, Australia had its gold rush, which was the donkey's golden age. Now their descendants wander the ghost towns in ever-dwindling numbers. Once they were welcome strangers to Australia, they've outworn their welcome, and the exterminators arrive by air. The donkeys attempt to outrun their fate, but nothing outruns a high caliber bullet. This man doesn't enjoy killing donkeys, but the donkeys compete with livestock and some carry a tuberculosis virus that endangers cattle. He makes death as painless as possible. One shot, perfectly placed. Australia intends to wipe out wild donkeys. They're being killed at the rate of more than 6,000 a month. These donkeys are safe from extinction, but then these donkeys have never been wild. They're bred on this farm as show animals. While tens of thousands of wild donkeys are shot and left to rot, these animals still sell for up to $600 a piece. But even the domestic donkey industry is disappearing. It peaked way back in the 1930s when Australia went through a donkey cart fad. It was a preferred method of travel when going on Sunday picnics, and it hasn't totally lost its popularity. Like a summer Sunday in the country, some traditions never die. Here's a tradition that began far back in the mists of time, tossing a saddle on your trusty camel. In the middle of the last century, this might have been preparation for a daring expedition to the unexplored interior of Australia. Today, it's just another form of amusement. Up we go. Come on, come on, you too. Lawrence of Arabia, it isn't. Lawrence of Australia, maybe. Some like it slow and easy, but most like it fast and challenging. The camels are running at Alice Springs again. exactly poetry in motion, and the rough track reflects its frontier town setting. But things are different in the big city. This is the Melbourne Cup race, Australia's version of the Kentucky Derby. These thoroughbreds will not show up on the menus of people or their pets. They still serve a human purpose. A 
And as long as ranchers need to herd their cattle, there'll always be work for the tough little quarter horse. There are things technology can never replace. There is work that can only be done by a great horse and a great rider. In Australia, both are legendary. And the greatest of all the Australian legends was born up here in the high country. A thoroughbred colt escaped its owner and joined up with a herd of bush horses. The owner offered a thousand pounds reward to the horsemen who brought him back. Wild horses are still hunted in Australia, but around the turn of the century, they were ruthlessly slaughtered. They were shot, stabbed, even penned up to die of thirst. They were treated as vermin then, and nobody seemed to care. But one man, one man was able to make a lot of people care. The man from Snowy River. He lives forever in the hearts of Australians, thanks to a poet named Banjo Patterson. from Snowy River was just one pursuer of the thoroughbred colt, and he was just a kid against tough and proven horsemen. The wild horses and the thoroughbred colt outran the veterans that day. But as the poem tells it, the man from Snowy River wouldn't quit. He captured all the horses and the heart of his young nation. Australia's heart was captured by the wild horses too. They shared the Snowy River legend and that saved many of them from the wild donkey's fate in this rough-hewn outpost of the new wilderness. When our European ancestors first settled the Americas in the 18th century, the possibilities seemed limitless. And so did the resources, the forests, the game, the land itself. About a hundred years later, when the first white settlers landed on the shores of Australia, the prevailing attitude was pretty much the same. Tomorrow would always take care of itself, don't worry. The pioneers had different priorities from those we embrace today and nobody challenged their right to kill whatever got in their way. Nobody worried about extinction. Nobody even thought about wildlife management. A lot of us think about it now and worry and challenge, especially in North America, where the wild frontier has begun to fade. Our wild horses have friends in high places and their wholesale slaughter has been stopped. Our donkeys or burros have many of the same friends. It has been argued both in America and Australia that wild horses, donkeys and camels are not really wild because they were introduced by us into their new environments. But by any definition, they've all earned their place in the new wilderness.